Tom R., you are up next, sir. Hello. A second time caller, actually. Um, we discussed a hand approximately a year ago. Um, and just as a heads up, that one was created into a thumbnail, which received about 25,000 views. What was the name? What was that thumb? It said, D- don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you might create another thumbnail. <laughs> don't do this either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did, we did just put one up today where the thumbnail said, I don't believe you, which wasn't a bad call. And again, if anybody ever calls in, you have to understand, please don't take a fact. Don't take offense at the thumbnail. The thumbnail, the way that the YouTube algorithm works, I mean, it's, it's a very important um, stat of first hour click through rate when the video is delivered to subscribers. So, you know, these types of like over the top thumbnails get more clicks you know, than, than like something that was always static. So don't take offense if I do that. Uh, okay. I, take, I take no offense. I <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, this is a two five hand. Okay. Um, we're dealing with eight players out of Bonita Springs, Florida. Is that in like central Florida or Northern uh, Florida? No, th- this is Southwest Florida. You've taken oh, a couple okay. of calls from Bonita Springs folks. It's in between uh, Naples and Fort Myers. This is a two five game. Mm-hmm. Um, the structure is um, an eight hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand dollar max buy in. The effective stacks are nine sixty four. Okay. Okay. And so um, it is full full ring for us now, but it's eight handed. Um, and the under the gun opened to fifteen. Okay. And, is that is that and, the standard open? Seems a little small. That's that is a little small, but for this evening, half the table was raising to fifteen and half was raising to twenty. Right. So it is approximately standard for for this specific player. Okay. So he raises to fifteen, it goes fold, fold, and then I'm in middle position and I three bet to sixty dollars. Then it folds back around to the under the gun villain. And he just calls. What do you have? I have a pocket pair. It's a pocket pair of queens. It's the queen of diamonds and queen of spades. All right. So under the gun to 15, hero in mid position, three bets to 60 with queen, queen folds back to the under the gun who calls. Seems pretty standard so far. Pretty standard so far. So the the pot's 120 and we go to the Mm -hmm. flop. Okay. And the flop comes out. It's uh, four of diamonds. Yep. Four of spades, mm-hmm. eight of diamonds. So eight, four, four, pretty good flop for you. Um, we shouldn't really be scared of a whole lot of four X here. Yeah, I'm, I, I look at this flop and I say, this is pretty good for me. So I, I need to uh, keep betting. And so that and the villain checks, mm-hmm. he's first act and he checks. And I end up betting $60 um, and uh, the, the villain tank calls okay okay so now the pot's 240 so everything seems pretty standard at this point so before you go to the turn i just want to say i want to say a couple things too about sizing and and all this so it's interesting because when you don't have aces here like as an overpair when you have queens and kings sometimes people will call you with ace high ace king ace queen and then when you have aces if you were to have aces, there's less of a chance that they're going to have ace high. So I don't overly concern myself with sort of kind of dink and dunking to try to get called here by ace high. Like you could go small here to 40, but then the reason to go small would be that you'd have to be up against somebody that sort of knows to call with like king, queen, king, jack suited to find your back doors. You took an in-between sizing. I probably would have just gone like 75 to 80 here and still probably expect ace-king and ace-queen to call. So I probably would have bet larger here if I were you. I think that the four becomes almost irrelevant here. And uh, most of the time, you're going to have the best hand here of kings or sometimes, you know, people just like re-raise, you know. So I'm feeling pretty confident I might have bet a little bit larger here. Yeah, thanks for that input because a lot of times I'll I'll – down bet and I'll bet 30% of the pot, but then I decided to go 50% of the pot because of the diamond draw. So you would have even gone larger. So that's, well, that's good. Remember it, it's a function of the board texture, right? So if you down bet like to one third, you can usually bet a large volume of hands that you three bet with for one third, but it has to do with the board. 
Like, I love this board on 844 with queens. I don't like necessarily like 7, 9, 10. You know what I mean? So, and other types of boards. Anytime you get a low pair where neither player is going to have a pair, neither player is really going to have the trips, and you have a big pocket pair, that's a really good board for you. And you want to be getting as most val- as much value as you as you possibly can. Um, with that being said, sometimes connected boards, even though they're not necessarily good for you, can sometimes be taken for a large sizing because that's where you want to get the value and you're going to get called by a lot of draws. But I do feel like that is more indicative in single raise pots where there are more hands that are represented as opposed to a three bet pot. I really like this spot. I would have just bet larger, but okay. So the pot's 240. Okay. And the, then the turn comes and the turn is a five of clubs. The villain checks, okay, and then I bet one hundred and twenty. So you go half pot again. Yeah, and I, based on your prior comment, I believe you, you're going to take some issue with that. <laughs> I just think that if he called the flop, I don't. Th- Here's the thing. So if I take myself to the turn when you use the half pot sizing, and Emily, I don't think a half pot is terrible. It's not. It's just not really reflected in, where a lot of if you call them sizing police, right? You get the preflop police, you get the sizing police. The sizing police are going to try to look at solutions that are spit out through solvers or pre-solved stuff. And for the most part, the half pot sizing isn't used a ton until you until you get to the river. It doesn't matter. For live play, I think it almost accomplished the same thing as the small sizing. Um, and I, I think whatever I'd if it accomplishes the same thing as the small sizing, sometimes you can get away with bluffing with the small sizing, but using the value portion of the hands that you wanted to use for small sizing and upping it to half pot. Okay, there's that. Now, if I got here on the turn by betting this half pot sizing, I just don't think that betting, it's not like if you bet 120, you're going to get called, but if you go 180, you're not going to get called. I think you're either going to get called at 180, you're probably going to get called by the same number of hands if you will go 180 here than you are for 120. So if you're going to get called by the same number of hands if you go 180 for 120, then I certainly like going 180 here, right? right. With queens. Right. Get the extra value. I got yeah. it. Okay. And so, well, he, he of course, he tank calls. And so now the, the pot is 480. Okay. And we're going to the river. And the river is a five of spades. So villain calls. And it's 480. And now, and by the way, too, you know, another reason to start to going large is I actually want to make as much money as possible and possibly even get all the money in here. Now, you know, you guys have 800 left, but if you had used almost close to pot size sizings or at least two thirds, two thirds, you can see how this hand would shape off if you went 80 on the flop call. And then you went like 225 on the turn, you would be, you'd end up with about a pot of 700 now instead of a pot of 480, if I was doing that correctly. So, and you almost, you almost could move all in at the end. Now, I don't know how often someone's going to call down with tens or jacks, you know, versus that type of pressure, but it gives you at least the option. So you said the river's the, f- right now in the pot's 480, the river's the five of spades. Is that right? Uh, yes, Bart. The, the right. river is the five of spades. So the final board reads four, four, eight, five, five. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Right. And this is where the, the point of bewilderment occurs. Um, up until this point, remember, the villain had checked and I'd driven the action. At this point, the villain led all in for $484. For 484 Yes. Why was I thinking that you had more? I thought you were 965 effective. That's correct. Nine, 965 was the effective stack was his. And he let in for a pot size bet. Oh, I, oh, he's not all in. He just no. bet, he just bets 484. Oh, my bad. No, he went he went all in. He was the effective stack and he went all in. Well, some, uh, something doesn't add up great. because you wouldn't have started at 965 then, right? No. You, put, you put in 120 on the turn, 60 on the flop, and 60, so... I, I apologize. I apologize. I miscalculated the effective stack. The effective stack was putting him all in. Was putting him all in. So, so he, he moved all in for 480. 
Correct, correct. And his effective stack was lower than nine nine sixty. I apologize. So his the effective stacks was probably seven fifty. I mean, the thing that cha- the right. the thing the thing that that would change. So that's just not, that's not fault, Bart. No worries. No, just I'm just saying. So I was about seven twenty. I mean, the thing that that would that would change about the hand is that you wouldn't have to bet as large as I'm advocating. If you started with seven twenty and you wanted to get all the money in by the river instead of nine sixty five. You you wouldn't have to quite go. Uh, I actually I still probably would like my sizing of um, eighty would bring it to two eighty. Then like at least two hundred would bring it to like six eighty. And then you guys have like four hundred left. But at least here you still have a pot size bet left where you could have put them all in. Let me ask you this question. So he moves all in for four eighty into a pot of about four eighty, and it's four four eight five five. What if the what if he checked? If he checked, um, I was contemplating either checking or betting, and I think I was leaning more towards a, a check. Really, I was. Why? Why? Why would you? Why would a five lean you? So, what about if the river was a deuce or a three? The the reason being is I, I'm going to go back to. Uh, your first caller said something that that resonated with me on this this hand, and I didn't announce that at the beginning. This was a high hand night, and the other reason being is because of the tank call, tank call, mm-hmm. rather than him just calling quickly. So I was looking at timing tells, and okay. I know that's not the best, but I would have expected if he was on a flush draw or a weaker pair to just call more quickly than tanking and considering what he was going to do. And the way that I was just reading the situation, I really was concerned about him having a four or a pair of eights. And I know that's kind of being scared of the monsters under your Well, bed. I mean, there are certainly but, combos of eights full and there's certainly combos of ace four. And there's also a possibility with the five coming in that he could have five X of diamonds, which really diamonds. should only be ace five of diamonds or maybe something like five, six, they might call a three bet. Yeah, I, and I get where you're going with. Well, what are you going to do if he if he checks? I, I would have probably ended up betting small <laughs> or trying to, but I I don't I don't know. It, it it was I was just so thrown off by the fact that he went all in. Well, really- well, we'll we we will get we will address what actually happened. But I want to because I think that nine times out of ten this doesn't happen. What ends up happening is is that you have three bet pre, bet the flop, bet the turn. This river comes, you get it's checked to you. And then there's a question of what do I want to do with one pot size bet left? And if I had queens here, I'm going to tell you that I would probably be playing this for a three street all in. Uh, I would be playing this for a three street all in. The five, it's not the biggest plank in the world for the reasons that we talked about. But I think any card here that's probably... I mean, even a jack or below, once in a while you're going to get run into a boat. I'm going to move all in. I mean, how about what if the river was a four and he checked you? So it's four, four, eight, five, four. Oh, I'm, I'm betting that. Okay. Well, you know you still lose to eights full, right? I do. Okay. And you still lose to a four. You're but, right. But, you're <laughs> no, I'm just saying there's less combos. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying that um, I would play this as an all in across and then jacks becomes close, right? Because with your jacks, now you're losing a quick. So jacks, you could get, I could get on board or tens. You start to get on board where, Oh, this, I can't at, at the, in this game, it might be a little bit too thin to go f- through, you know, all, all three streets full. Okay. Let's see what happened. What actually happens is the guy moves all in here for four eighty. Yeah. He, he goes all in. Right. So four of diamonds, four of spades, eight of diamonds, turns five of clubs, rivers, the five of spades. And he moves all in. This one I I kind of would just sort of, and I'll look over in the chat in a second. Guys that play more a lot more two five than I do on a regular basis because I really only play two five, you know, to get content. So there's a lot of ton of people that put in more contemporaneous hours than I do at this level. But I, I would tend to chalk this one up as a hand that's kind of weird, so weirdly played that I'd have a hard time folding here, and a call can't be bad. Like it can't be. Oh, this is what makes like somebody a big time winner at two five making these folds versus someone that calls, or vice versa. Excuse me, I just don't think that's the case in a three bet pot when it comes out four four eight five five. I mean, because if you're gonna fold queens here, are you folding aces and kings here? Um, folding aces, no. Um, folding kings, 
probably not. And that's where my logic is kind of messed up. Right. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just a difficult situation because I'm looking at it going back to your, uh, um, small stake exploits going, well, what is he turning into a bluff other than the Miss Diamonds? Well, it's troublesome. Yes, I was looking at that too. It's also troublesome that the board gets double paired where if you had an ace high of, say, not flush draw, I don't think he's going to jam. He's going to hope right. it goes check, check. So that that is certainly true. The reason actually why aces is a slightly easier call here besides the fact of just the hand strength is that you're you're going to block – some of the five X and the four X with aces. Whereas here you don't with queens. Right. So right. that, I mean that, but there's no difference between having Queens and Kings unless, no. unless he somehow plays aces this way in this manner. I just think that it's one of these ones where I would just chalk it up to, it's a very strangely played line. I'm getting two to one. I'm going to close my eyes and call. It can't be that bad. No. Um, unless it's the biggest nit in the world where you've played with him so much where you just know when he's moving all in, he just always has it. That's a big, big exploit. Yeah, so I, he was an unknown player to me except for some one hand. But I looked at it and said, I'm throwing out aces here because of the pre-flop play. I went back to the pre-flop play after thinking about it uh, thoroughly. Um, but I just couldn't find enough bluffs to make an appropriate call for me in that situation. And so I ended up folding. By the way, Hero has the Queen of Diamonds, which obviously means that there's less, you know, he that some of the, he blocks some of those Broadway diamond draws. So if you had black queen, if you're saying you have black queens, you might maybe black. more of to call. Black queens, I would call. Huh. I was going to call. Yep. And did you so, ever? Did you ever find out what happened? What he had? Yeah. So um, this goes back to another one of your your podcasts, by the way, Bart, where you tell folks, "Hey, don't talk strategy at the table, at least not too loudly." <laughs> Me and his friend were talking strategy the whole night. Um, and I picked up on the fact that he was a little bit of a tighter player. Um, didn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean he knows what he's doing or not, but he was just tighter. He, he ended up telling his friend right after the hand and he had no reason to lie about it, that he had pocket tens and his friend looked at him who was, who seemed like a knowledgeable player from out of town and said, why in the world did you go all in with pocket tens? You have, you have some value there. And he says, Oh, I was trying to get him off of a diamond flush draw. Diamond, diamond, no diamond flush draw. Well, that doesn't make any which sense. Which made no sense. He, he said, I thought he had ace of diamonds X, which made no sense at all. So the only, well, <laughs> yeah, which made it just, I'm, I'm not going to defend. I'm not going to, here's the, the only reason why uh, somebody could possibly, it would make no, it would not make sense to bet 10, 10 like this. There is a very, very, and not in this particular case, there is a um, certain situation where you could bet an overpair here for value if you think he's going to get called by ace high. But that would right. probably only go down if you check back the turn. And it wouldn't go down for this sizing. So right. if I had 10-10 here and you check back the turn, the river's a five, I want I want you to call, right, with ace high on a double paired board. The, the strength that you're showing, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But I will say, though... It actually doesn't surprise me, though, even though what the guy's saying makes no sense of why he did it, that he might actually have 10-10. And even though it makes no sense why somebody would ever do that with 10-10, and once the guy gets called, let's say you called, he said, oh, you're good, turns over 10-10. I've seen this a lot. This is why I call here in this spot, because there is an element of button clicking here. There is these portions of hands that make absolutely no sense that are in the po opponent's range just because they're button clicking. Like it wouldn't shock me if the guy somehow had 10, 10 and he thought that he was going to get you off a of Kings or aces or Queens because the double pair on board. And he's just not really saying it the right way. So that's why when you get to the end like this and you get pot odds, this is why there's a spaz factor at this level. And this is why I don't make folds at this level. Okay, so the the key takeaway here is when in Florida call, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, well, it's it's not even just when in Florida. It's just like in a three bet pot with an over pair, and you're going to get pot odds when someone's trying to represent a low card for trips. I would have a very very hard time, very very hard time um, folding. But I but I do think that is important to look at your sizing. You absolutely want to shape your hand um, as a three street all in here at seven twenty effective. And I would hope that you would bet the river 
on a lot of bricks if checked to. I would hope that you'd bet the river here with queens. I think jacks and tens are close. But once you get up to queens, kings, and aces, you've got to go three streets with these hands. It's really how you're going to increase your win rate, obviously, if it went down in a different way. But um, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it.